Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So I thought I'd make this video to explain why I would do something so stupid as to run nearly 100 kilometers in the space of around 10 days. So I thought I'd make this video to show you what my mindset was like going into this, why I actually did it, how I'm feeling right now. And here, yes, I do have the commemorative, what says the Ultra London medal right here. Actually quite proud of this, to be honest. Ultra London, 55 Ks. Now, Max, Max, you were involved with this with me. Max was my support crew and he was there by my side handing me gels, handing me water, looking after me. You got some questions for me, Max? Let's ask the questions that people uh, in the comment section, I'm gonna say there was about 50% people uh, criticizing what I did and 50% people supporting the challenge. Uh, I understand. I completely understand people that are being critical because I would say the same thing that the critics would be saying is why the hell would you do something so stupid? You could cause a long-term injury. But what do you got for me, Max? Why did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Quite simply, why did I do it? Why? Now this started basically, this type of, um, it was more about a mental challenge and it started with a guy called uh, David Goggins, which I was uh, consuming his content basically. And this guy, he hadn't uh, done any type of running for about a, a year and he was really overweight and he ran a hundred miles around a uh, running track uh, without no running training prior to that. And he caused these stress fractures on his shins and he kind of went to a different place in his mind to overcome this feat. And he wanted to qualify for some crazy ultra race called Bad Waters. Uh, but to do that, he had to run 100 miles. So he did. And I thought that was crazy what he did, what he put himself through, what he put his body through. He taped up stress, stress fractures on his legs. He was, you know, he put his body through. He had to go to hospital afterwards, basically. But I never thought it was humanly possible to do what I did. I went 70 miles, and at 70 miles, I was dead. I was at 100% what I thought, what I thought was 100%. I went, 30, I went 31 more miles after being in the worst physical shape I've ever been in in my life. So I thought that's crazy, 100 miles, what's that, 160 kilometers, you know? So he kind of put it in my mind that your body's actually capable of much more than we actually give it credit for. Now, we did the marathon, didn't we? Did the marathon, I did it the next day. I was like, you know, why can't I run a marathon basically on no training, let's give it a go. Gave it a crack. Uh, my knee started to cause problems and I'm, I'm basically, I think, uh, instead of it being actually an injury, I think it's more my IT band, you know, cramping up and causing the knee pain. So, I think we should move into the next question. How is your knee? How is my knee? Everyone's worried about my knee because basically the 55 kilometer run video is just basically me running with a sore knee the whole time nearly. And that was exactly how it happened. After about the second kilometer in, my knee started to hurt. And we already preemptively planned that. I knew my knee was gonna start to hurt because I did a little treadmill run uh, the day before and I could only last four kilometers without my knee, with my knee causing me issues. So we got these knee straps, I got this uh, support thing for my knee and we had to strap it up straight away. So basically I ran that the whole time with a uh, sore knee. We interviewed uh, Fiona Oaks literally the day before, right? Fiona Oaks is missing a kneecap, right? She's never gone to the start line of a marathon without a sore knee and she says that. I will show you a clip right here. You always have a, that's what some people say to me about my knee. I know somebody once said, you never go to the start line of a marathon knowing you're carrying an injury. And I've never been knowing I'm not carrying one. I've always got a bad knee. So, but I've got so many other worries going on that I don't kind of notice my knee because um, it's like this hurts and that hurts and the pack's heavy. So she always has a sore knee. So she was in the back of my mind too. Now she did one of the toughest foot races on earth called Marathon de Sables in this is the Sahara Desert. Running through the Sahara Desert, it's, oh, how many, how many Ks is it? 250 k's through the desert up sand dunes. They only give her like small amounts of water. Uh, you know, it's crazy. You camp out there in the sandstorms. It's crazy. She did her, I think it was her first one she did uh, with a broken toe, fractured foot. Her horse uh, stood on her foot. 
so she had the bone sticking out of her foot through this marathon. Marathon that, you know, men in the military quit from and cry, it's just crazy, crazy thing. So that was in the back of my mind too. One of the things that was actually in the forefront of my mind was the fact that animals are suffering, they don't choose that suffering. And I was choosing to run this race, so that was sort of in the back of my mind too. So my knee, basically we get to the question of the, how's my knee. My knee's okay, like let's, let's pan out, I'll show you. Okay, so there's my knees. Let's just do a squat. We good? Boom, squat, boom, jumping, squat, jumping, squat. Okay, my knees are all right. This is about a week later. Um, to be honest, it took me a long, uh, fair few days to recover from this one because I did it back to back from the marathon, basically. So anyways, I'm watching the Fiona Oaks uh, movie and I'm like, I'm gonna look up if there's an ultra marathon. <laughs> so I think the start of the movie, movie I lo looked it up, the end of the movie, I've already signed up. <laughs> so it was more of a very spontaneous thing. Now, I, I know like what you're saying, like all the experienced runners out there, you can't just go out and run an ultra marathon after a marathon. Look at you, suffering the whole time. The whole point was that for, for me to put myself through that suffering to challenge myself mentally to see what my body's actually capable of. Obviously, I know I'm on the right diet, so my diet can sustain this. Obviously, I had no base level uh, running training. I haven't ran for about three years, I think, something like that but my body pushed through it. And it was only to the very end, like the last couple of kilometers, that my knee really couldn't take it anymore. I think that the muscles were tightening up my RT band and it was just causing my knee pain. So it wasn't an injury, it was more my muscles or something like that because my knee is actually okay. Um, so it's interesting how your tightening of your muscles can cause pain, excruciating pain, and it might not be an actual knee injury. Max, you got any more questions? What inspired you to do it? Yeah. Well, so my inspiration was this David Goggins guy and finishing with Fiona Oaks. And also, like, I wanted to sort of show people that, hey, you know, I'm not even an athlete. And if you think vegan diets are deficient, I'm not even an athlete. I don't even do any type of running. I do weights, mostly upper body, right? And I can run nearly 100 kilometers in the space of, you know, just under two weeks without any running training. So the diet's fine. Obviously, like, I've got some pain, but I've got no running base. I'm doing some crazy ultra marathon after I've done a marathon with no running training. Of course, I'm gonna have pain, but it just showed that I could go the distance on a vegan diet. Yeah, what I felt like before the race, I guess I felt really inspired and motivated and I really wanted to push myself, you know? I, I wanted to push myself. Do I recommend other people do this to themselves? No, of course not, you're gonna hurt yourself, basically. So the whole video, right, was a warning at the start and was like, wow, I'm in pain. This wasn't a smart idea, you know? So not, not, I'm not coming out here going, hey guys, do this, this is smart. This is, obviously, you can cause yourself a serious injury. I didn't, luckily. I um, was in pain, yeah, but I pushed through the pain. Um, but as soon as I literally thought that I had done something wrong, I couldn't land on the knee anymore. I stopped, I started walking and, but uh, yeah, you can seriously hurt yourself doing something like this. Um, but I actually feel really accomplished. I really feel like I done something that I didn't actually thought I was capable of. And it's crazy how you can push yourself past your limits. Um, but going into it, I don't know, I was just like, you know, what, what if I can complete this? You know, what if this is possible? And, you know, all the things Fiona said to me just put like a bit of knee pain into perspective for me. She has no kneecap. She runs up sand dunes. It's crazy. What do you think it takes to run 55 kilometers? Or what is the hardest part of it? The hardest part of running 55 kilometers, I don't know, if I had a bit more of a running base, I'm sure it would have been a lot easier. But basically, the, the hardest part is the niggles. Um, mentally trying to overcome those niggles. Because I think like, it wasn't just my knee that was sore, my back, my foot, shins, muscle pain, you know, my stomach was kind of cramping up. The hardest part of it is like trying to mentally overcome those those little niggles in your body um, for a long time. So I ran for seven hours straight. I didn't stop at the checkpoints because I was afraid that if I stopped, my little muscles in my legs might hurt my knees and stop my knees from, you know, I wanted to stay warm basically. 
So, um, yeah, the, it's more of a mental challenge because really I'm running at a really slow pace. It was nothing to do with my cardio. Um, it's, is my nutrition okay? And can I mentally overcome the pain barriers? So, like, look, I just want to tell everyone that is worried and concerned that I would have shared the same worries as you. You know, I used to tell people don't do running, it's really high impact, you can cause knee problems, especially people who are a bit overweight and are new to exercise, I would say like cycle, um, maybe walk up hills or, but um, you know, I really think that a lot of the fear is in your mind. So be obviously be smart, but I, I, for me personally, I did not think I was capable of running the ultra straight after a marathon. If you asked me before the marathon, could you do an ultra? I would have said, oh, not right away. <laughs> but um, it's it's amazing that um, you know I was capable of pushing myself through that. Like I just think that that's amazing, and I'm and I'm feeling pretty good. Like I'm feeling pretty recovered. Obviously, I'm not going to go running a another you know big race anytime soon. You know, I'm, I'm definitely going to challenge myself again because I feel like they that I've broken through some mental barrier, and maybe we can do something uh, a bit bigger next time, maybe even a bigger run, a longer run, or maybe even something else. But we'll see. But yeah, thanks for everyone's worry. Um, obviously, there's a warning at the video for us for a, for a reason. Like, I don't recommend people, you know, put themselves through that. It might be hard seeing me in pain and suffering, but. I, th I hope that it inspires you if you, you know, if I can do something like that, maybe you can get into something a little bit, you know, less intense and less <laughs> physically taxing. Um, don't let your, your mind um, be the reason that you give up when something gets tough because your mind tells you lies. It tells you, oh, like, you know, this is a little bit painful. Maybe you should stop or, oh, exercise is a little bit hard. Maybe I would rather lay on the couch today or, and also like, to all those people who think, think vegan diets are deficient, I want you right now to get off your butt and go run a marathon, you know, uh, without training. See if you can do that on your, you know, bacon rich diet. <laughs> you know, obviously the vegan diet I'm on is working for me. I'm recovering, I'm building muscle. I can run around the track probably longer than you can. Um, so yeah, if, if you want to be critical of the vegan diet, you know, I've basically, prove that you know after being six years vegan i can still do these things without even being an athlete without even being a you know a runner i'll be a little bit smarter next time maybe i might even get a little bit of running training behind me before i do the next um big thing but yeah thanks again for everyone this is just basically an explanation as to what was going through my mind obviously it's not the smartest thing to do straight after a marathon when you're not completely recovered but yeah i loved it i feel really accomplished by it i got my little Got my little medal here. There you go. Not even a runner. Ran an ultra. How do you like that? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, Max as well. Max was there supporting me. I would have done it with or without, with, if Max was telling me to stop, I would have kept going anyway, you know. Um, I think we discussed this very thoroughly and I really wanted to push past the limits. And um, yeah, I think your body's just, your body's really, really capable of much more than we give it credit for. So yeah, thank you all. I'll leave the video link below if you haven't yet seen it. Hope it inspires you. Hope you, when, when you're going through a, something that's a little bit tough, you have the perspective of what the animals are forced to endure. Check out my podcast with Fiona Oaks. Check out David Goggins too for the, you know, sort of overcoming these mental struggles. He's not a vegan. I hope he does go vegan one day. Um, but yeah, thanks again. And I'll see you in the next challenge video. Peace. <laughs>